how does emergent theory relate to the self-simulation hypotheses? And can we actually cover, you know, the basics of emergence theory? The self-simulation hypothesis is agnostic okay. to what the mathematical game board is and what the algorithms or simple programs uh, or equations are that would uh, play out on that uh, mathematical substrate. Emergence theory is what we call a toy model. And so that's when, um, when a scientist has a conceptual framework for something okay. that is developed enough to call it a model, but not um, rigorous enough to have physical realism and equations, for example. So emergence theory is a toy model that we work on here at Quantum Gravity Research that fits within the, the framework of the self-simulation hypothesis interpretation of quantum mechanics. And uh, it focuses on um, this mathematical game board called um, E8. So E8 is an algebra okay. called a Lie algebra. It has a geometric object associated with it called the E8 algebraic root lattice. And that's an eight dimensional object. Uh, you can call it a crystal if you want. It's an eight dimensional crystal. And it has very powerful um, and special mathematical qualities that a lot of physicists and mathematicians appreciate, such as its association with the largest division algebra, the octonions. It's uh, also uh, the root lattice point set is the densest packing of seven spheres or eight dimensional balls in 8D. And as a uh, group, it's the, a Lie group associated with these algebras. It's the largest of the exceptional Lie groups. So all of these uh, three things make it uh, uh, beautiful to mathematicians and uh, useful to some physicists. So we start with that as the game board. And it also includes other algebras, sub-algebras and sub-lattices. Um, that have been used by others in various physical models. So when you take that, you're getting a lot of other goodies along with it. It's called an algebraic stack. Okay. And um, so we take that and then we transform that by projective geometry to a lower dimension and by a certain angle. And what we get is, um, is a quasi-crystal. Have you ever seen like a mosque and they'll have yeah. these tiling patterns that don't repeat like a checkerboard and they're very beautiful and they're made of tiles. So that's called a quasi-crystal. Mm. And uh, those quasi-crystals are shadows or lower dimensional projections of higher dimensional crystals. So crystals are things that repeat like a checkerboard okay. and a quasi-crystal is a pattern um, that is very orderly and has, it's a language or a code, it has syntax but it doesn't have to repeat, like English, like um, it's against the law in English to say the dog ran cat, uh, but you don't have to say fast, you can say the dog ran slowly. So that's syntactical freedom within a construct of rules, and we want a code, and we want a lower dimensional thing, but we want that to fully encode the mathematics of this E8 Lie algebra, and it's associated, um, you know, it's equivalent Okay. mathematical representations. So then the game that we play on that quasi-crystal code, you can call it an algorithm, you can call it, um, like in chess, okay, there's an algorithm by which the knights move and the bishops move by a different algorithm. And so they all have these algorithms within the game uh, with some syntactical freedom. And so with mm. these algorithms playing, they make patterns um, in a probability distribution um, of how particles are going to interact. And there's millions of possible games that can meet those definitions. And we don't know, the scientists at QGR, we don't know what game is the right game, but many of us are convinced that we have the right game board. We just don't know mm. what the right game or algorithm or simple program is but we have some intuitions. And that's what we're working on nowadays when we're not filming a podcast like yeah. this, right? That's the toy model of emergence theory. And if you connect it with the self-simulation hypothesis, you can say, well, Clee, wait a minute, what's that game board made of? We'd say, well, it's a thought within the mind of some 
bizarre emergent pan-consciousness substrate that can in principle emerge in the future and then bootstrap itself by self-actualizing itself, mm. self-simulating. Wow. And so it's, a, it's almost a mystical or spiritual viewpoint, but I like what Arthur C. Clarke said where, you know, since physics is always and science is always advancing and leaving earlier theories relegated to the dustbin of incorrectness, that he said that which we label today as magic and taboo or supernatural, right, outside of physics or nature, often later gets pulled into physics, and, but it has to be tomorrow's physics, new physics. So unless we at this point have reached the end of the road and completely discovered the ultimate unifying theory of everything, we should expect that we're gonna discover aspects of our current assumptions about physics that are incorrect and are going to be replaced by, by new views. So maybe in that new view, the things that today people say are incredulous, like psychic phenomena, the experience of, you know, synchronicities, the idea of, you know, remote viewing, astral traveling, and, and even the idea of consciousnesses from the future being able to come back here and observe or even interact with us. Maybe those things can later not be metaphysics or mysticism or you know, mere philosophy, they could perhaps turn out to fit into a future theory. So that's kind of what we work on it here at Quantum Gravity Research. Wow. We're working on a new philosophy. One dollar a month from enough of our followers will help us to keep pushing forward with this mission. Please click the link in the description below to join our giving circle.